Welcome to this lesson on computer systems. This is the first lesson that you will be doing and I will introduce to you how computer systems work and talk a little bit about what the difference is between a computer system and any other system that you know. So what we're going to be talking about today is how we define a computer system. So at this point in the lesson your teacher may have asked you what you think a computer system is and you'll have some time to discuss that and come up with some ideas yourself. So what we want you to get out of today's lesson is you want to be able to actually define what a computer system is through a number of different components and we'll talk about that. Now all of you will need to know what is meant by a computer system and you'll need to know how to explain it. But when you want to start extending yourself, you'll be able to label the inputs, the outputs, and you'll be able to explain what is meant by a process and what is meant by the processor. And those of you that are really wanting to push yourselves, you'll need to actually have some understanding of the need for a reliable computer system. You will need to find some real life scenarios out there that tell us what makes a good computer system, why we need to have reliable systems. So at this point, you would have discussed what you think a computer system is, and you would have fed back to your teacher. Now, the interesting thing is, a computer system can be anything. It doesn't have to necessarily be the PC or the laptop that I'm in front of at the moment. The, it can be anything. It can be an iPad. It can be a phone. It can be anything that has input, process, or output, and even backing storage. And we're going to talk about that on the next slide. So here's a diagram of a computer system. Now you're going to need this diagram when you go to produce a poster or a document that explains what a computer system is. Now what you can see here is the definition of a computer system is a series of components that work together for a common purpose but generally they include an input, the CPU in the middle and the output and there's also backing storage so for example, an input might be if you are typing on the keyboard, then the processor has to translate that information and output it to the screen. Now the other thing that you need to think about is backing storage. Backing storage, I want you to think about devices that you can use, because I don't want you to think about the USB itself. The USB is a type of port. What you need to think about is this is called flash memory not a USB or a memory stick. The thing on the end is actually called the port, the USB. This itself is called flash memory and that's a form of backing storage so, and so is your hard drive. What we mean by output is for example you may have a monitor or you may have speakers or headphones, anything like that is classed as an output. So what is a computer system? Well, we've, we've already discovered that it is input, it is process, output, and backing storage. But for those of you wishing to push yourself, what you need to know is that computer systems also have other options. What if the, my computer system wanted to, to connect to another person's computer system? In that case, I'm gonna need something else. And the item missing is communication devices. Now, before I talk about communication devices, I've got some examples here of some inputs, such as your keyboard, your mouse, your scanner, your digitalizer, your trackball, which is basically an upside down mouse, uh, because back in the day, the mouse used to have a ball inside it, which you could roll around on the desk to, to track movement. Now they tend to use lasers. And then you've got a camera, because it takes a picture into the computer, and also a microphone which records sound. Some output devices we have are monitors. So you've got an old CRT monitor, some of you may still see these around, uh, an LCD screen. The other thing that you will see are printers. There are plotters, so these like plot graphs on paper that you, you tend to see these used more in earthquakes and so on, so that you can actually plot the movement also, you have speakers, and you can even say headphones, which are very similar. When you want to save your information, 
you need to be able to store it. So what we have here is we have a zip drive, which don't tend to be used as much anymore. We've got optical drives. What I mean by optical is an optical drive is something that includes things such as CD, DVD, Blu-ray. They are all optical because they are using a laser. The other thing that you have are the USB flash memory. Like I said, it's not a USB on its own. You need to acknowledge that it is flash memory. You also have, may, may remember that you have floppy disks, but they don't tend to be used anymore because they can only fit 1.3 megabytes on there, which isn't a lot of information. So there, here are some examples. Now, when you go to produce your poster, you need to be able to explain what a storage device is. So you need to be able to acknowledge that a storage device is something that can store information when the computer's finished processing it. So I can save information on there. But you are going to need to do a research task and you are going to need to acknowledge the different types of drive available. And for those of you wanting to get to extended, advanced or EP, what you're going to need to know is the difference between solid state and magnetic hard drives. So you are going to need to do a bit of research there. And you're also going to need to know the benefits and drawbacks of these solid state and magnetic hard drives. So this is something that you will need to do to extend yourself. Now, just to give you a brief idea of what is meant by solid state and magnetic, hard drives used to be quite thick and quite chunky and they were magnetic drives and they had like a disc and a platter on top of them that would spin and they had moving parts whereas solid state such as a USB flash memory they don't have moving parts in them but you are going to need to do some research and find out more about the difference between those for your work. So I talked about wanting to actually hook two machines together this is called communication. So after backing storage, you can also have communication devices. And what we've got here is a network interface controller. So I would need a wireless network interface controller if I wanted to reduce the use of cables. I've also got Bluetooth, so you could actually send files to each other that way. A dongle that allows us to actually connect to the 3G. And we also have a wired network interface card. So these devices allow us to actually connect with each other. Now your main task and what you will need to do is design a poster that explains computer systems in the future for year seven. So our future year sevens are going to need to know what input output storage is and you will need to use the diagram that you've seen on the previous slides. And what I recommend for you to do is to actually put the inputs all the way on the left so you can actually give examples. Outputs you can give examples of and give examples of backing storage. Now around that information you are going to need to think about magnetic state drives. Uh, you're going to need to think about solid state. You're going to need to think about all of these things within this scenario but those of you that want to actually push yourself towards advanced and extended, you also need to be able to research and explain why our computer systems need to be reliable. And you need to include examples of communication devices and explain what they do. Now, you will need to break this down and you will need to look at the extended and advanced and EP on the previous slides when you're producing your next thing, which is your success criteria. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is go and produce your success criteria based on the scenario and think about what you're going to need to include in your poster. Now, once you have done that, you will need to go and make sure you comply with copyright. So you will need a sources table to acknowledge where you're getting your images from and you'll need to include that copyright information with details and reasons linking to your success criteria. For those of you in advanced or extended, you will need to explain what is meant by copyright and explain what you have to do in order to meet that. 
So when you are producing your poster, to make sure that you get the best possible quality and the best possible grade, you will also need to make sure that your poster is well organized, uses borders, high contrast colors such as black and white. We don't want red with green writing on top of it because it's impossible for us to read as teachers. Also, make sure you've got good use of space and that your text and images are positioned efficiently. Your teacher will give you a list that will explain how you break that down and what criteria that we are looking for. So, to finish the lesson, your teacher will ask you a number of these questions. And these are things that students who are coming into year seven will be asking themselves when they look at your poster. Can your poster answer these questions? I want to thank you for listening. I hope this presentation helps you recap on what we talked about in the lesson. I've shortened it down to 10 minutes so that you can see what you need to do. Thank you for listening.